The South Korean government has given us more than $23,000 since we've had kids. $23,063.47 to be exact. Why? In 2018, South Korea's total birth rate fell below 1 and its population shrank for the first time in 2021. But this decline started long before that. The government actually started investing in policies to increase the birth rate back in 2006. But why should you care? The population replacement rate, or the number of births required to replenish a country's population, is 2.1 children per woman. In 2020, Korea experienced the population death cross when they recorded more deaths than births for the first time. South Korea's population in 2020 recorded its first full year natural decline. The number of births in South Korea once again drops in June, bringing down the fertility rate in the second quarter to a record low 0.7 per woman. Declining birth rates aren't unique to Korea. In fact, fertility rates have been decreasing worldwide throughout the years. But it's never been to this extent, so what this means for the future is uncharted territory. For Korea, the declining workforce and subsequent decrease in tax revenue will strain social services. Healthcare costs have grown more than any other OECD country in the last five years. Old age poverty, already the highest in the OECD, continues to increase. And by the late 2030s, there won't be enough young males to maintain even the reduced level of troops for the country that's still at war with North Korea. At the current rate, official estimates show that South Korea's pension fund is expected to run out by 2055. According to forecasts, nearly half of Koreans will be elderly in 2070. And if nothing changes, South Koreans could face natural extinction by 2750. If this is true, there will be no more K-pop in the future. Maybe you don't like K-pop, don't want to have kids, and you're not Korean. How does this affect you? 2.1 children per woman are needed to maintain a stable population without migration. The US is currently at 1.64, the UK at 1.56, Canada at 1.4, and China at 1.28. Even India is below the population replacement rate at 2.05. If the population starts declining in your country, you might see a similar future as South Korea. In short, you'll end up paying for and taking care of the elderly in your society by yourself. Worst case scenario, the economy collapses and you die alone with no family. Population decline is a worldwide phenomenon and how Korea addresses the situation will serve as an example for other countries on what to or not to do. Since 2006, the government has poured $200 billion into this problem, but Korea year after year has been beating its own record for the lowest birth rate in the world. You have no idea how fast the population is gonna collapse. So when did the fertility rate start to decline? We can't speak for the rest of the world, but in Korea, it can be traced back to the 1960s. In the early 1950s, following the Korean War, the population at least doubled and the total fertility rate exceeded six children per woman. In 1962, the country began a national family planning campaign around the idea of a small and prosperous family. The public responded to the campaign well, and by 1970, the TFR was down to 4.53 children per woman. In 1974, the government began to encourage two children per family, and in 1988, they set a target of a two-child replacement level of fertility, with messages that even two kids were too many. Until the mid-1990s, the country ran birth control programs and distributed contraceptive pills and condoms for free at public medical centers and even offered exemption on mandatory military training for men if they got a vasectomy. And all of this did, in fact, lead to a decrease in births. Fast forward to 2023, times have changed, but the idea of what it means to be a wife and a mother in Korea have not. While the country and economy have developed, gender roles have been slow to evolve, and young people are finding less reasons to start families. Even though the outcome isn't changing, the government is still using the same solution, money, but more of it, more money. So is there a magic monetary amount that would do the trick? In 2019, when we were pregnant with our first, the government was giving 700,000 won for pregnancy and childbirth related expenses. This came in the form of an allowance on a credit card, so we didn't actually receive this money, but we also didn't have to spend it out of pocket. The government provides two different kinds of aid to parents, child allowance and child rearing allowance. These both get deposited into your bank account and you can use the funds as you please until your kid starts daycare, at which point the government sends funds for daycare instead. The cost of daycare has ranged from 426,000 a month for his first year to 364,000 a month his second year and 280,000 a month now for his third year. The government covers 100% of the daycare costs if he goes to daycare for at least 11 days a month. And all these allowances increase significantly every year. For my second pregnancy that began at the end of 2021, the pregnancy and childbirth related expenses was up to a million Korean won. In 2022, the government also gave us 2 million when we registered her birth. Child allowance is still 100,000 a month per kid, but the child rearing allowance for birth to age one was raised from 300,000 a month last year to 700,000 a month in 2023. 
In 2024, this amount is going up to a million a month. So let's do the math. For two kids born in 2019 and 2022, the total amount of money we've received into my bank account that can be used however we want is 16,550,000 won, and the amount that the government has subsidized for pregnancy and childcare, including daycare, is 12,919,000 won. That brings us to 30,569,000 Korean won, with today's exchange rate, that's $23,063.47. At this rate, by the time our first turns 5, we'll have received another estimated 23,448,000 won, or $17,686.26 for both our kids. This isn't why we had kids, but it is one of the reasons that we've decided to stay in Korea as a young family. But what do you think? With the fate of humanity in your hands, is $40,000 for two kids over the course of 5 years enough of an incentive to convince you to make babies? To save the world?